when I originally was trained, it was as a neurophysiologist. And when you get up in the morning, you have to read a lot of stuff that other people have done. And I said, isn't there another system that is barely studied, yet very interesting? And spiders and spider webs at the time were really not studied at all. When I published a paper in Scientific American in 92, there were maybe, I think, 30, 40 papers a year out. And now, I think it's about you know, three papers a day something coming out. So the field really exploded and we just were in it very, my group and I were in it very, very early, which, which is great fun. In all cultures worldwide, uh, people that have a wound will seek out spider webs and slap them on the wound and that heals. It heals because the spider webs are very hygroscopic, so they, they glue everything together quite nicely. And they have uh, bactericides in it because the spider doesn't want bacteria or fungi to grow in the web and just eat up the proteins. Um, the fibers are very small, so they're good for blood clotting. They contract when wet, so they pull the wound together. Uh, you don't have to pull them off because they're biodegradable, they fall apart. That makes it very interesting for more modern uh, medical application to make devices out of silk that can be implanted. So you get cocoons from somewhere, from a silkworm, because spider silk is too precious. It'll be very, very expensive. We let the silkworm spin the cocoons, we take these cocoons, then we dissolve them. And then you have these molecules and you can do things with them. You can, for example, cast them into a shape. We have one project where we cast them into a meniscus, the, the little cushion that sits between the joints in your knee. Well, knee replacement is really not a good idea. If you're 40 and you need a knee replacement, that implant will last about five years. And then you have a real problem because they cut away bits. So it's really not an option. And this is why doctors always say, well, wait as long as you can for a knee replacement. Replacement. Now, we're not doing that. The idea here is we're repairing something. So we're putting in a biological material, not a plastic, not a titanium or anything, a biological material that will be accepted by the body, will be integrated into the body by the cells, and will hopefully, therefore, last out. And we're just clearing all the hurdles to go into humans, and it looks very positive. So we'll be going into humans the beginning of next year. We could use silkworms directly, but uh, the goal at the moment is trying to understand how the silk is folded because somehow, independently, the spiders and the silkworms have hit on a way of making this, this soup that can be spun very energy efficiently. This now, of course, is very interesting. What is the difference? What is the similarities between the two silks and what's the difference between the silks and man-made polymers, synthetic polymers? Can we, by studying the silk, learn how to make a polymer that can be, that behave just like the silk? And silk, by definition, is different from all other biological material because it is spun. All other biological materials are grown. And growing is a really tricky thing. Spinning we understand as humans from all our you know, nylon production. Silk has been around for about 6,000 years as a textile. Can it be a, one of the polymers of the future when you know, oil-based polymers are no longer around? <laughs>